welcome to another episode of What You're Watching. Uh, I am Bo, and as always, I'm Jamie. And we are here to answer the fundamental question in all of our lives. Hey, what you watching? So, Jamie, uh, what you watching? Well, uh, most recently, we revisited Leatherface. Oh, I, I saw Brian's post about that. Yeah. He was not happy about it. It was one of those. It was one of those. I get up before he does, like on the weekends, and I start watching a movie, and then a couple minutes later, he comes wandering out, and he's like, "Son of a bitch!" Like I did the same thing with Diary of the Dead when I watched that, and he's like, "Why? Why are you watching this?" And I'm like, because I haven't seen it in a while. And I, I, the only time I get to watch stuff that he doesn't like is when he's not around. And inevitably he comes wandering out and ends up watching it with me. But uh, he can't really say anything at that point because I'm already in it. So we did rewatch that. And um, yeah, it turns out I don't, um, I don't really like it as much as I thought I did. (laughs) Now I don't, I I have to say I don't think it's a bad film in and of itself. I uh, and I've never been keen on the whole twist thing because to me that was way too obvious as far as like who it was going to be. But um, I mean, because you've got a movie called Leatherface and you spend a whole lot of time with this one guy that they're trying to make you think is Leatherface, but you spend way more time with this other guy, so it's really obvious. But. I've never been real keen on the twist just because I don't think it worked. I think it was pretty obvious, but then I was like, man, there's a lot of stuff about this that, that just, it's um, not really great for a TCM. Like it's, it's kind of a fun criminal movie, like criminals on the run kind of thing. And it's really vicious and gory, but um I remembered it actually being better than it was not. And like I said, not that it's bad now. I don't think it's bad. I still enjoyed it, but it didn't strike me as it did the first time. So I know I I've seen that movie. Thing. I have zero memory of Leatherface. You could tell me that that was not in fact a, a Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie, but a film version of the great B- British Bake Off. And I would be like, Oh yeah, that sounds right. I oh, like, well- I don't remember nothing about that movie. I think it's just because I didn't give a shit about it at all. Well, sometimes I kind of think they didn't either. (laughs) Yeah, sure. Sure. I mean, like uh, there's the scene that just is really preposterous where they have like what Brian refers to as the cow of holding because like three people hide in this one cow, one of them being the fake leather face, the, the big, the big dude. I mean, he's a big guy. And, um, and then like two other people in this single cow. I'm like, yeah, I don't think so. Like, I, I don't think that would work. It's a, it's a good idea for hiding. You know, it's an interesting idea and it's gross and everything, but it just, you're not going to fit all those people in that cow unless you dig a hole beneath the cow, which clearly they didn't have time to do. So <laughs> I, li- I like the um, fact that you are examining the physics of like, well, they, I guess if they, you know, b- dug hey, a hole it- under the cow. No, I literally thought about it. I was like, did they drag it over? Maybe like a like an existing crevice or it was like, no, they just climbed in this cow. And then at one point they cut their way out. I'm like, why are you cutting your way out? You were already in it, which means you had to cut it to get in it. You know, we've all seen, you know, uh, Luke Skywalker, you know, hiding in the tauntaun yeah yeah in the tum tum of the tauntaun like you you know you obviously had to cut your cut it open to get in it and why are you cutting your way out like it didn't really make a whole lot of sense but it looked gross i guess so that was something uh it just i don't know it was kind of bizarre it felt like a whole bunch of stuff thrown together that they thought would just be like gnarly which it was but it it didn't really didn't really work for me and what's funny is that john rhodes uh bless him I love John. And he has this whole theory about how it makes sense at the end that this one guy who is like perfectly normal and like a nice guy would just flip on a dime and turn into Leatherface because he's been off his medication for a couple of days, you know, and I mentioned that out to Brian. I was like, so there's this theory that the reason he did the because that was always one of Brian's biggest issues was that like there's no way he's just going to flip like that. I'm like, well, you know, 
uh, John's theory is that, you know, he's off his medication and that, and he's like, what the fuck kind of medication did they have him on? And I'm like, you know, that's a good question. <laughs> like, it's, it's, um, it, I don't know. It's, you gotta really let yourself go to, to accept it. And I have a lot of time for the Chainsaw series. That is one of my, that's my second favorite franchise behind Friday. And I let a lot go when it comes to that. Like, I, you remember when we talked about Texas Chainsaw 3D on Devour. I love that movie. I, I don't give a yeah. shit about the timeline. I, I enjoy it. It's a fun movie. So I, I give it a lot of concessions, except for Next Generation. I can't stand that film. But um, this one, even I, at the end, was like, well, I mean, no, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> did you guys watch the, the original movie? I don't know if you did. Yeah, so... It's um, it was still an enjoyable watch. Just um, I remembered liking it a whole lot more. So it's almost like a company or a production studio was like, "Hey, I wonder if we made another Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie. It doesn't really matter how good it is, and we just threw it out there. Like people will still go see it. Almost." And and it might even be one of those situations where they were about to lose the rights. Although considering who they got to make the film, you'd think that I, um, I don't know. You'd think that they had a reason behind it. Who, other who than, directed it? I don't. Again, I don't remember anything about this movie other oh, than it, it was, exists. It was Pascal Logier, I think. Oh, uh, yeah. All right. Um, I don't. Yeah. It, see, that's another guy that I'm like, oh, he peaked early. I like martyrs a lot, but <laughs> after that, it's kind of diminishing returns. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. It wasn't. It was Alexander Bustillo and Julian Mowry, which are the the not martyrs, but uh, inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which also. I, I expect more from, but we did get what they're, you know, really known for, I guess. And that is the extreme because they did go extreme. I mean, you can't fault it for that. There is no lack of gore in that film. There's no, you know, lack of brutality. And mm -hmm. I do love that about it. I, I'm all over that. It, there's a lot of really striking visual moments there. It's strictly the storytelling and the script that I kind of get hung up on. But <laughs> it's just what people say and what they do. That's the problem. <laughs> Yeah, I get it. But it I get looks it. Fantastic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's the same problem I have with that Evil Dead remake. Like, I, I like how bloody it is, but the second somebody says a thing, I'm like, oh, stop it! How about you just <laughs> chop off a finger instead? But that that electric knife scene, though. Yeah, it's oh, good. I, I just go back to like nobody left a theater humming the special effects. You know, like that's fun and bloody, but that's just not that's not enough to carry a movie for me. Like it, it's, it's kind of fine. That's I, I would put it squarely in that camp of like, yeah, it's fine, but it's not it, like, it doesn't have the impact of even the original for me, but um, you know, the special effects are way better, but I like the characters from the original evil dead way more than I like any character in the remake. I mean, I, yeah, I can, I can get that. I, I really do love the remake, though. So, I mean, I'm okay with that. But, I don't know, in this movie, I'm like, there's a scene where a girl is, like, fucking her boyfriend on top of corpse that they found in a trailer. And he's kind of mummified. Like, he's not gross. Like, oh, okay, he's gross. He's a dead guy. But he's not, like, slimy and, like, maggoty. But I'm just like, that and because she's like kissing all over the corpse's face and i'm like that can't taste good that can't smell good like how is that hot like and i know that there are people who are into necrophilia yeah. have you that. not and seen necromantic and she's oh god and she's obviously a twisted fuck but at the same time i'm just like ew like you know that just being around one is one thing like licking one is totally different you know there's this scene where the little boy the young leather face is like wearing a cow's head and i'm like that has to smell i'm very hung up on smells obviously because i'm just like that has yeah, to smell clearly. terrible 
that smells terrible. I know it. And <laughs> so those things get kind of stuck in my head and all I'm picturing is the smell. Just like when I watch The Battery. Do you know I spend the last probably 20 minutes of that movie thinking how awful that car must smell? Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm just like, Ugh. but I, Yeah, but I think that movie kind of invites it a little more. Like that, that the battery is very much like, let, let's put you in the car with these two dudes. Ugh. And yeah, I, I'm, I'm with you. And uh, like when you see him draining the juice off like the can of tuna and stuff. And I'm just like, Ugh. like it just yeah. has to smell so bad, you know? And then he's like taking off his socks and I'm just, I'm, I don't know. Like, I'm just, re- all right, here's a story. Please. Um, and this is, I know this is what you're here for. You know, like when I was a teenager, my best friend was dating this guy. Right. And he was pretty gross. Like I never understood how she could touch him much less like have sex with him or whatever, but he was a gross dude. But one day I was over at his house and we, we were, and he was eating a plate of eggs, like scrambled eggs off the coffee table i mean he had it on a plate but it was it was the plate was sitting on the coffee table while he was in the middle of eating he propped his foot up on the coffee table took off his sock and started like fingering out the toe jam from between his toes onto the coffee table next to the plate of eggs that he was eating and do you know i was off of eggs for years after that like i would not touch an egg because every time i saw one i thought about that and i was disgusted like you were afraid this dude was gonna bust in with his (laughs) greasy toe jam he's just gonna toe jam all over my (laughs) eggs but it was gross because you could actually see it on the table where he would like push it out from between his toes onto the table. Like I, I, she didn't stay with him that long. Um, fortunately. (laughs) And then (laughs) he was also very bossy and that used to piss me off because he would boss her around like crazy. And I would, I would say something because you know me, I, I have kind of a big mouth, but and he's like, well, that's why you don't have a boyfriend. And I'm like, I mean, if you're my option, I'm good. <laughs> like, like I am happy to be single right now. <laughs> you know, I I think it's a that comes down to to who you fit with, right? Like I my girlfriend I would not say is bossy, but she is she is more direct than I am. And I like that because you know, it just means I don't have to make as many decisions. <laughs> Well, I mean, yeah, I'm just like along for the degree, ride, which I like to a certain degree. That's fine. But I'm talking like he's like, get in the kitchen and get me this. And bitch oh, no, no, that, no. You know? and like, yeah. I'm like, mm-mm, mm-mm. Nope, 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 nope. No, nope. I'm talking like I'll say, hey, what if we go do this? And she's like, I don't I don't really want to do that. All right. Well, how about this? I don't want to do that either. How about we just stay at home and I'll make dinner? Yeah, that's that's where we were going to land. Yeah, I was actually, when I was 14, I was visiting my grandmother in Alabama and I went and spent the day with my uncle and his girlfriend and my cousins at their house. And he was a very, he was kind of like that too. Like he would boss his girlfriend around, you know, to, and at one point she had gone to the store or something and he looks at me and he's like, he's like, go in the kitchen and make me some cornbread. And I was like, fucking what (laughs) and i was i looked dead at him and i said make it yourself and he's like and he was like what and i'm like look like i am not your kid i'm not your girlfriend i am like and it that's not even it it's just that don't have that attitude well you don't need to have that attitude with anybody how about Uh, please but but that's that's a cultural thing too is, you know, the man being the head of the household and issuing orders and shit. Like, I went to a wedding recently where uh, the a, a big part of the wedding was all about, you know, the man is the one who makes the, the decisions and the woman's there to support that and that kind of thing. And, uh, it, you know, that's just some people's beliefs. It is very patriarchal and I don't agree with it, but, you know. It's fine if you choose to be that, like, if that's the way you want to live, if his girl, if his girlfriend is happy with that situation, I'm not going to tell her she can't live that way. I mean, whatever, you know, I, I'm, 
I'm also very old fashioned in a lot of ways, but to just look at someone and demand something, I don't care who you are. Like that's just rude. Also, I was a guest in his home. Like I'm not yeah, yeah, it, like it, I'm not your fucking maid, you know. Right. Him pushing it on you is a different story. Like if he's got that arrangement with his, his wife, that's one thing. But yeah, you just don't ask random folk in your house to to, do, <laughs> to like cook you shit. <laughs> I've got like I have uh friends come over for movie night, you know, once every couple of weeks and at no point have I ever been like, "Hey, go paint my deck." <laughs> and see, I'm the it's so funny because I am like the quintessential southern like hostess if someone is at my house you know i'm gonna be like trying to shove pot roast down your throat right, right, you know right. i'm yeah. the i'm the one who is like when we have people come over to fix things i'm like bringing them iced tea and stuff you know i i i love doing that for people i enjoy doing that for people opening my home for people but i don't expect to go to someone else's home and then be told to get in the kitchen and <laughs> like it's just what yeah what <laughs> yeah like i if i'm over at someone's house and they're cooking i'll offer to help but most of the time that's an empty gesture like i don't actually expect them to take me up on it you know <laughs> like may, yeah, maybe no, yeah maybe like hey if you want to like pull out some silverware and set the table or something like fine but at no point have i ever offered like hey can i help with something and somebody would have been like yeah make cornbread like whoa! Oh shit! You caught me off guard. I. It's not something I and, typically expect. And also in my house, you know, I'm very like when it comes to Brian and and me, like our living situation. I cook dinner, you know, and I always and he does not even want me to do this. He's just like, don't stop doing that, you know. But I do it anyway. He gets the best pieces of things, the the better cooked thing. If something is burnt, I take it. If something is a smaller portion, I take it. If something, you know, and it's, that's just because that's the way I am. I'm doing it for him because I want to, you know. Well, yeah, and that's, that's being in love. Yeah, that's but totally I'm, understandable. But I'm, but I'm like, <laughs> just look at me and go, go in the kitchen and make me some cornbread. <laughs> You should try just try it one day. I don't even know where your kitchen is. Like, yeah. I just got here. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Enough cornbread talk. Uh okay, let's okay, let's okay, let's okay. I, I there's a movie I want to talk about. Okay, go. Uh because <laughs> I I want to have this discussion with you. Okay. And that is the new James Wan film Malignant, which you and I both I saw. I know it. I know it was coming. I know it. <laughs> <laughs> She said she was going to talk about malignant. I said I know it. Um, <laughs> so, so here, here's my very brief take on malignant. Okay. Which is as soon as, it, by the way, spoilers for malignant uh, starting now, and I, there should be chapter Look, breaks. Had a week. Yeah, and there, there, <laughs> there should also be chapter breaks. So if you want to skip to the next movie. You should be able to do so. Um, but uh, my very quick, you know, back of the box review of Malignant is once the movie gets as schlocky as the premise, I'm totally into it. And and that means starting at the jail scene. Like as soon as the conjoined twin emerges from someone's skull and starts doing karate... That's the point where I'm like, yes, this movie is stupid as shit, and I love it, and I wish this had been the whole movie, and I love all of that stuff. Everything up to that point, I just kept waiting for it to get there, and like I, and and this isn't like, hey, if you figure out a movie, then the movie's pointless, but also I figured the movie out super early on because I don't think it's all that clever. And so, and which is fine. That's again, dumb is not a criticism here. It's a big, dumb movie and that's fine, but it doesn't, it, it, I think it tries to make a little too much hay out of the mystery, which isn't all that mysterious. And I just didn't like any of the characters enough for that to be interesting. And I think I may have told you this about 45, 50 minutes into it. I was like, I know where this is going. 
I know there's a co- conjoined tri- twin or something at the end of this, but I'm just bored by this. And and I almost turned it off, but I stuck with it, which I'm glad I did because I had the the reverse reaction that I do to most James Wan movies where I like the first hour and then the last half hour I think is kind of garbage. Um, And this is the reverse where I was like, the first hour of it, I just kept waiting for the movie to A, catch up to where I was, and B, get get schlocky and and you know there's some kills and stuff that are fine but none of it's great and but that last as like i said as soon as the conjoined twin starts doing karate in the police station i was clapping my dorito stained hands together like this is the movie that it should have been all along it should have it it shouldn't have hidden the twin thing as long as it did uh it should have like leaned into that more and been goofier with it because once it got goofy i was totally down um but anyway that that's my and i know some people were like the very very end with the whole uh you know i'm gonna lock away this person i have the power now all that stuff um i know some people didn't like that but by that point i was like yes this is what the like this whole movie is really really goofy it should have been goofy all along and the fact that it wasn't goofy and the character, that sister character is one of the most worthless characters that has come down the pike in a while. Because uh, other than the fact that she is an actress and might be into the detective, then I dare you to tell me anything about that character. <laughs> other than she like, you know, likes to park near the edges of cliffs. That's pretty much it. <laughs> See, um she dresses like a princess right because she's an actor and that's <laughs> that falls under she's an actor and she might be into the detective and that's I, it so here's the thing i obviously yeah you know pretty much what's up i was expecting like a, a dark half kind of thing totally uh, dark, turned, dark half basket case yeah. one of the two and it's kind of a combination of those two well well exactly that's what i was gonna say is i was expecting like a dark half kind of t- kind of thing and it actually turned more into a basket case kind of thing which i am here for you know i'm fine i think that what because my mouth was hanging open when we got the full reveal Not because I didn't see it coming, but because what we got was so fucking phenomenal. When he, when, okay, this is, this is me when I'm watching the film. When the doctor is like, okay, let's meet Belial. Belial. Okay, let's meet. Yeah, might as well. Yeah, yeah. Let's meet Gabriel. And then she starts to go around. It looks like she's about to go around the gurney, you know, to stand behind the girl. And, and I was just like, I, I like scooted forward and I'm like, I was like, is he in the back? And Brian's like, yeah, I bet he's in the back. And then so we and then we see what it is. And I stood up and I was like, fucking yes, because it was so far removed from what I expected as far as like it was so much more. It was so more. It, God damn it. It was much more outlandish than what I was expecting it to be. And that made me so happy. But then like I I figured you know, it was what, before that in the film, I figured it was her and she was, you know, it, it was like an alternate personality or it was a twin, like a dark half kind of thing. And it was a, it, they, they had some kind of mental connection. I did not expect to see this little thing like pull her skull apart and force its face out that i was not expecting and when that happened i shit like i was just like i am in love with this i am all over this movie and uh, before that i didn't have any problems with it i had loved it from beginning to end because we get we open in that hospital which is just beautifully gothic i love uh, the, but, the look of all of that and yes it was a green screen like i <laughs> yeah it's, it's this james wan color palette of that blue green vomit color that i hate that, i normally that's the point. do as soon as that happened i was like god damn it james wan 
And, and fortunately, no, I normally do. You know, that's one of my biggest complaints about the Saw series yeah. is, and all those movies from the mid two thousands where they all looked like that. I can't stand monochromatic films that have that like bluish or greenish tone, but for whatever reason it worked for me here and i think it's because it was just so gothic like the in- the exterior of the building was so just he leaned so hard into that that i was like all right i'm here for it i love the theme song i love the music brian doesn't like the music i love the music throughout the whole thing um i've heard complaints that the music doesn't fit the scenes I don't care. Like he, I, when people say that they um, that they don't see the Jallo in this film, I argue that the Jallo is very heavy in this film, and that part of that is the music. You know, you'll be watching a Jallo film, and yes, you have some that have like a beautiful score throughout, and uh, you know it sounds very gobliny or whatever like that, and that you expect that. But frequently, when you're watching Jally, there will be music just popping in that makes no sense but you go with it. It doesn't matter because that's just the way it was. Um, And then you have like the thing with the cops, but not just the cops, but the fact that the sister was involved in the investigation. That is very jello. That is, you're going to wait from way back with bird with a crystal plumage. You've got people who should not be involved in police investigations, involved in police investigations. And that's, another thing that fit with that. So I feel like, yeah, he really did pull uh, all of these influences in. And the beauty of it was to me in the beginning, it almost feels like it has a little bit of an Asian flair with the, when we first see the creature, you know, not knowing what it is. Yeah. For sure. Like with the boyfriend, I mean the husband. Yeah. Um, And it, it, And at times it even had like a Samara feel to it. Like I was, I was feeling the ring here, here and there. So I felt some, some heavy Asian influence, but more than that, I felt a lot of Italian influence and it, I just, there were so many things and he was pulling from so many different places that I loved it for that, you know, and to a a lot of people, they, if they think it's too messy, I, that's what I love about it. I love the messy about it. And as far as the ending, Dave has said that he doesn't like the ending and he, neither, none of his family liked the ending. I didn't see any problem with that at all because I'm like, look, for her entire life until except for the part where he was dormant, but Gabriel had this power. And if he can have this power to take over their mind all like completely on his own, then why can she not also have the same power. They share the same brain. Plus, you so, just saw a, a Kajoy Trent doing karate in a police station. Let, right. let's, At that point, like, I mean, I'm willing to accept anything. Right. You know? the, again, this is a big, dumb horror movie in the grand tradition of big, dumb horror movies. I yeah. just I just felt like it took way too long to get to the big, dumb horror movie part of it. I don't and, know. I enjoyed it so much that, I mean, I, I can see that, but I just loved every second of it so much. I was, I had a big stupid grin on my face throughout the entire movie. I was just rolling around in it because it, there were a lot of things that were very 70s and very 80s. And back then we didn't give a shit necessarily if everything made sense. It didn't matter. Or, or if everything seemed like it was messy or pieced together, it didn't fucking matter because it was a spectacle. And this film was pure spectacle and I am all about it. Like I, I love the fact that he just, he clearly to me made the movie he wanted to make. And I just think it's amazing that he got the opportunity to do that. And I fucking loved it. Also the underground portions were very, um, night strangler to me. Like, I don't know if you remember. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Of going, yeah, going under under the city of uh, Seattle and all Seattle, that. Seattle, yeah. yeah, and I, yeah. I felt it looked very like almost like the same location, and I think he did that on purpose, you know, and because I I feel like he was now that seems like a random callback to something that doesn't seem to fit anything else, but it felt so similar to the scenes that we got in the Night Strangler that I don't see how it could have been an accident. Like it just seemed so on purpose to me and that made me happy i like i don't know i was just i was like a little kid i really was i was like a little kid i was clapping i was like whooping i was i don't know i had so much fun and then when i went online and inevitably 
there are going to be people who don't like it. And I was expecting that. But holy crap, I didn't expect it to be as divisive as it is. I mean, it is dead serious one end or the other. Yeah, yeah, most people. It's, yeah it's hard for me to, to get there. Like, I don't. I, I do think it's probably my favorite James Wan horror movie. Um, I, I think he's done better movies, but I, I think it's it's probably my favorite horror movie because it doesn't celebrate criminals and it doesn't totally fall apart in the third act. Um, and, and, you know, it like if it, I was I, over I here going it, celebrate criminals and then I'm like, oh, never mind. OK, yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. The Warrens, the criminals. Um but you know i don't i don't think the first hour is great but uh you know i wish it had been more fun like i wish i had had more fun with that part of it and i know a lot of people did and god bless them and all that stuff but i came away from it being like well you know the front end of it's not so great but that last few minutes is just ridiculous and i love i like i like a big dumb goofy movie and that's what the last 30 minutes was and so you know at the end of the day i felt very not neutral about it because I do like the last. Like, if if someone were to ask me, I'd be like, "All right, here's the deal. It's a conjoined trend. Don't worry about the first hour. Fast forward all the way up to the point where you see this cancer monster coming out of the back of her head in a police station, populated by '70s characters from Barney Miller, and <laughs> and when that happens." like that's where you you kick back with your beer and enjoy it um so yeah i don't like i i guess it i i understand people being effusive about it because i can i i can more readily see people kind of loving it front to back than i can somebody just totally dismissing it uh because i do think it's interesting to see a you know james wan is a competent director i don't really care for his movies all that much but he's you know he's a good director and you know it's fun to see him do action sequences with a little bit of over-the-top gore attached to it and that kind of thing so you know yeah, that's, I that's fun i guess that's the thing is you have to be able to enjoy that film that portion of the film when it just really just goes off the rails you have to be able to look at something like that and have fun with it um if you can't have fun with that if you can't embrace the ridiculousness of what's going on in that police station then you're just not going to like this film yeah and that's fine you know that is that's i i i am about 100 percent sure that he was expecting not everyone would love this film like i don't think he made this movie and was like yeah people you know this is going to be a, across the board everybody's going to love it you know he he's not stupid like, I think he knew that he was making it for, I mean, I think he, I feel like he made this for himself and I, and he knew the whole time that there were going to be people who would love it and there were going to be people who would hate it. And I, I totally understand if people don't like it, I get it. You know, um, I, on the other hand, embrace the shit out of it. And I just, I had a really good time. And even before we got to the part with the cops, the part in the holding cell, holy shit yeah like it <laughs> but yeah the holding cell is where the movie starts for me because during the the sequence where uh they're at or the the sister is at the mother's house and they're going through the home movies or whatever the fuck that yeah. was the point where i almost turned it off where i was like i am so bored <laughs> nothing is happening and i know all of this like why are we having yet another scene to talk about this gabriel character that is absolutely a conjoined twin yeah. Let's well, get the fuck on with this, if you would, please. I feel like he knew that people would be on board with what was happening as far as like they, they're they going to figure it out. But then when you get to that point at the police station where everything just comes to a head, <laughs> um, <laughs> I think he's probably like, you think you know what exactly what's going on here? Hold my beer. Because well, but, yeah, but I think you do. I think it's just the you know exact no, you know what's going I, it's, on. But it's you the don't... execution of it. But exactly, but, that's you what know. I mean. But when you make the comparisons to something like Basket Case, that's a movie that's kind of bonkers all the way through it. Whereas this movie 
kind of plays it straight a little too long. And then when it finally gets bonkers, I'm totally o- along for the ride. But when it's trying to be like m- a more conservative kind of horror film, even with all its, you know, Gialli influences and so forth, it's still playing it pretty straight. And, and that's the, the stuff that I, but like I said, I got through the movie and that's more than I can say for Conjuring 3. So, <laughs> well, like, see, I, when he was playing it straight, I was enjoying it then too. Like I, I was like, okay, this sure. is cool. Like I'm, I'm liking this, you know, it's, it is very heavily influenced by Jolly, which I love. And I was all about it. And I'm like, okay, this is fun. And then when he kicked it into high gear, I lost my shit. Cause I, I just, it went as soon as we got to that holding cell and the shit broke out, like the, the moment, like they're all making fun of her and like pet in, and you know, teasing her and and well being a little violent not a little violent they're kicking the shit out of her i was waiting i was like all right shit's about to go down it's gonna go down because you're fucking with the wrong person right now and then i did not expect it to be as fucking nuts as it was like ripping chunks of flesh out of people and just breaking arms and twit and then and it and I can also see where people would be like it, thinking that it looked ridiculous with her doing all the backwards movements and everything. But I just thought it was phenomenal. Like I had a really yeah. good time. Did you recognize Zoe Bell? Yeah. Yeah, sure. I didn't even recognize her until I think it was actually Derek that mentioned Zoe Bell. No, no, no. I'm sorry. Before Derek, before I was talking to Derek about it, uh, Paula Hansen had posted that uh, <laughs> that Zoe Bell was in it. I was like, Zoe Bell. And then I um then I was talking to Derek and I'm like, who is Zoe Bell? And he's like, the chick in the in the mullet. I'm like, fucking what? Like I didn't even I didn't even recognize her. Like I didn't I didn't have time to recognize anybody though. I was too busy pissing my pants, but <laughs> and just having a good time. Like I was so excited. It was so it's so silly. I can't wait to watch it again. Yeah. I, I would go back and watch like I said, from that scene, from the holding cell scene on. Uh, I could I could see myself watching it again, but I will absolutely skip over that front end. Uh, but you know, it's eh, if if you like it, great. Uh, you know, I'm not talking to you. I'm just saying, uh, if you are a horror fan and were entertained by that first hour, then God bless you. That that wasn't my experience with it, but but yeah, again, that back end of it, I that was the that was the movie that I wish the whole thing had been, you know, and like, I know you got to build to a crescendo, but you could have done a little more than the, like, you know, hacky hacky with the trophy or whatever. Oh, I love that weapon too. I thought that was cool. I don't, I just don't think the end would have been as fun if it had been that way the entire film. I think what made that end so fun is that he did play it straight as long as he did. And then all of a sudden you're just like in an alternate reality where shit is crazy as hell. And I think that is what made me so giddy. Um, It just, I don't know. I, I wish I could capture that experience again. I know that when I watch it the next time, I'm, it, it's not going to have. It's not going to hit the same way because I know what's coming. Sure, but I'm still going to sit there with a big stupid grin on my face. Yeah. I know I will. You know? I've, it, like I said, it made me put the remote down because I was real close to bailing on that movie. <laughs> and and as soon as what here's what I had hoped the the whole time I was like, I hope it's a cancer monster. I hope that it was like an actual cancerous tumor that they remove from her that mm-hmm. has somehow become sentient. Like when you flush an alligator down into the stewards or something. Right, right. That's what I was kind of hoping. And so when they was like, oh, it's this twin that they just kind of shoved back in her head for no good reason. Um, <laughs> I was like, oh, well, that's kind of disappointing. I wish that had been a little crazier. But, you know, also somehow this conjoined twin that lived in her skull learned Krog Maga, uh, <laughs> up somehow, and that's fine. Yeah, well, I mean, that's what I said when we were watching it because I was just like, you know, if you shove something like that into somebody's skull, that's going to put pressure on their brain. I don't think she'd be all that develop- developmentally well off, you know. And then, and then Brian's just looking at me like, "Are you serious right now? Like, are yeah. you, are you, are you, like, you're contemplating that?" And I was like, "Well, obviously, I'm talking about a movie." where a twin has 
pulled her skull apart and forced his head out the back and then walked her backwards to kill people. So clearly it's not going to bother me that much. Sure. You know? <laughs> sure. Yeah. And I, I don't think you need a big set piece like the, you know, police station, the holding cell all through the movie, but I wish it had been that goofy prior to just to flavor the movie a little more. But, you know, it's that like Malignant is a movie that is totally fine. Uh, it, it Like, I think it's a little backloaded with the good stuff, but it's fine. You know, I can get through it. I probably won't. But um, but I get <laughs> I mean, it. That's kind of the way Brian felt about it, too. He's he's he liked it. You know, I think he gave it a four. And I'm just like, it's a fucking eight out of five. You're like, <laughs> I, I was just, I was right I down was the middle. I was turning cartwheels, you know. I was like, the, this is a two and a half star movie where the there is thirty minutes of great stuff and then an hour of stuff that I don't care about, and that is that is a totally average movie for me. Um, I'm curious to see where Duncan lands on this one. I, yeah, I'm curious about that too. I don't think he's seen it yet as of us recording this. So I'm, I, yeah, it, like Duncan and Kate both. I, I think we're going to see it today or hear about. She and saw I'm, Candyman today. I don't think she got around to seeing Malignant. Ah, gotcha, gotcha. Um, I know she had planned on seeing both, but I, she only, as far as I know, she only saw Candyman because we kind of talked about that. But yeah. She hasn't really, I don't think she's seen. No, I know she hasn't seen Malignant yet because I would have definitely, there would have been a reaction <laughs> one well, way or another. Yeah, I, I will I will give the movie that, that you cannot be neutral. Uh, like, I, at the end of the day, I think the movie is kind of a wash in terms of quality, but you can't be neutral about the ending of that movie. You, you're either going to be there for it or you're not. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah. So what uh, what else you been watching? Okay, you saw The Night House, didn't you? I have not seen The Night House yet. You have not seen The Night House. Yeah. Okay, uh, you should see it. You should You should see that's what, it. That's what I keep hearing. I, I want to see I, it. I won't go into it because you really should see it. And there are things that... Um, I will say this. If you've seen the trailer, uh, don't feel like you've seen the movie. I, I, have not, I have not seen the trailer. So. Okay, because if you've, you've seen the trailer, you might think that you've seen the movie... You haven't uh there are that was that's a really good that's a really good one it's fucking smart it really is and it's uh god there's so many things it i can't talk about it because i really 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 want you to see it but it's uh definitely worth your time i would i highly highly recommend it and i'd be curious to hear what you think once you do see it I, yeah, I definitely will. It's on it's on my short list. Um, have you seen Night Books? I have not. The the Netflix uh, movie. Oh uh, no, but I have Netflix, so I could. I here. This is a, a big recommend for me. It is a kid oriented horror film, but it doesn't it doesn't shrink away from being kind of scary and creepy. And having high stakes, like there are some kids who straight up die in this movie, um, nice. or at least end up in a place where they're, you know, better off dead. Uh, but it's got Kristen Ritter in it, who I like quite a bit. And uh, the, here's the basic premise is this kid gets lured into this apartment and it turns out that the apartment is sort of a magical trap where once you're inside, you're stuck there. And Kristen Witter pl Ritter plays a witch who is going to eat this kid. But before she can eat him, uh, the kid is like, wait, wait, wait. Uh, I can be useful. I can tell scary stories. Wait, that's Tales from the Dark Side. Uh, kinda, yeah. But imagine if the wraparound story from Tales of the Dark Side was the whole movie. Okay. And it's it's him and there's another girl that's trapped with him and the idea is like okay, we need to figure out how to escape this witch because we can't ever leave this apartment. Like even when she's gone, if you try to open a door and walk outside, you just end up right back in the apartment. Okay, so regardless of anything that goes on with her, they're still going to be trapped in this apartment. 
that, like even if they were to kill her or well, no, is no, this no, like there, an enchantment she, it's an enchantment she's got okay. a key but you know they they can't get the key from her uh you know without being duplicitous and whatnot and uh it's it's what i like about the movie is that like i said it's a good like kids horror movie for kids who are like 10 12 probably that range um but i also like the fact that the movie is very much about like the process of writing and being a writer and being kind of a creepy kid to some extent like the kid is very much like when you first see him he's got like the poster for people under the stairs under on his wall and w one of the ways that the the apartment catches him is that uh, he passes by this open door and the Lost Boys is playing and there's a piece of pumpkin pie sitting on a table. And the kid's like, well, I can't pass that up. That's fucking Lost Boys and pumpkin pie. Um, and and so it's it's very much like a monster kid kind of movie. And and I think that's why it really appealed to me uh, is that it, it it sort of captures that idea of like, yeah, you're a little bit different, a little bit dark and a little bit twisted. Uh, but that is something to be celebrated and awesome. uh, yeah, it's a, it's a very, uh, it's a very charming movie. And like I said, it, it, it doesn't like, it's not a full blown horror film the way that, you know, malignant is, but it's also not, uh, completely saccharine either. Like there's some, uh, there's some fun stuff in it that is, is kind of creepy. There's one of there are these little monsters called shredders, uh, that, that pop up in the movie that remind me of the spider things from the mist Oh, in okay. that, like they're kind of monster looking things, but they've almost got people faces. Ooh. Yeah. And, uh, I, I, I really responded to that. And there's a, uh, uh, a, a hairless cat. What are they called? uh a sphinx yeah there's a or sphinx the, okay. yeah cat in it and uh that's kind of a fun little character as well so yeah it's uh totally charming um it is perfect for this time of year like i'm already working on halloween decorations and getting the projectors ready and i saw that yeah so doing a bunch of fun halloween shit and this was a movie that really leaned into you know that sort of spirit of celebrating the macabre in a way uh so i really enjoyed it and i, I would i would recommend it i think it's a, a a real good time it's a it's a great movie to throw on that isn't going to be too uh uh too too uh depressing it's not a real downer of a movie as you might imagine um being a, a, a kind of a kids oriented horror film but it's uh it, it's really a, a great celebration of like Halloween and horror and stuff like that. Okay, well I will check it out. I do have the Netflix. Yeah, yeah. I I would I can't wait to hear what you think about it. I think you're going to enjoy it. Cool. So uh, what 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 else from you? All right. Did you see Superhost? I have not yet. That's on the okay. Shutter, right? Uh, yeah. Um. Yeah, it's not bad. There, it's a well. It's about some vloggers, some you like basically YouTubers who, um, they rent rental homes and then you know do reviews, or, you know. So then they there are only four people in this film. Like the entire cast is four people. It's yeah. this couple. It's Barbara Crampton is in it. Barbara Crampton is in it. Yeah, and she's she is great. Uh, there is a, a scene with her that's really great. Uh, and they go, and then things end up being not what they expected them to be. Now, I will say that I feel like the ultimate, once you meet the host, uh, the actual renter, or not the renter, the, the owner uh, of this property, there's something that you're going, you know, you immediately know. And you, you're if you think that you're like, oh, okay, then you're right. I mean, it's not, it's not that hidden. It's not, I mean, it's not, I, I don't think they were that clever, but it's the, the one standout to me is the, the ho the, the owner of this property. She's a fucking nut job, but her, the, the delivery of this actress is, is just 
kind of hilarious. You know, she's just so over the top and just like, ah. it, to the point where after a while it can kind of get exhausting. So it's kind of good that it's not very long. But uh, I don't think it's, there are a couple of surprises. There are a couple of really dumb decisions. And so it's not great. Like, it's not going to make my end of, the, end of the year list. But it's it's entertaining. It is entertaining. And so I do recommend it just for entertainment value. And I just think this one particular performance is really hilarious. But uh, it's not the kind of movie I don't think that is going to... It's probably not going to have a whole lot of staying power in people's memories. Um, just because it doesn't do anything really phenomenal to grab a hold of you. But, you know, it's... Uh, it's definitely worth your time for, you know, for a watch. And that's probably what I would just watch it once and then, you know, enjoy it and then, you know, move on. Cause it's not the, it's not the kind of movie that I'd see myself watching over and over and over again, but. Well, all right, let me, let me give you one more. Definitely as, I would check it out once. Okay. Uh, let me, let me give you one more as we're kind of wrapping things up here. Um, that is more uh, a statement of a problem that I've got. Uh, than it is uh, I, I want to discuss this movie in particular. <laughs> okay. So I watched uh, just last night this movie uh, called Case 347, which is a, a found footage movie in which a, a graduate student and her team of filmmakers go to uh, essentially New Mexico and run afoul of aliens. Oh. You know, what's funny is we're doing found footage for Halloween this year. My Our theme is I found Halloween, which we have not released publicly, but I guess I just did. Ooh, um, <laughs> you heard it here first, uh, folks. Yeah. <laughs> Breaking news, like anybody gives a shit. But it's the, yeah, our theme for this October is I found, ha or we found Halloween, because there's two of us. And yeah. uh, we're basically doing found footage movies. And I'm looking for new ones, because they're always the old, uh, you know, the old standbys that everybody knows. And mm -hmm. so I've been trying to mix it up with stuff I either haven't seen before or that people don't talk about. So, uh, well, I'll throw I'm another curious. one at you then. Uh, Butterfly Kisses, if you haven't seen it, is pretty good. Okay, see, I actually found that because I was looking at lists of found footage films. I have not seen it, but it kept popping up. So, um, and I hadn't heard anyone talk about it. So, I was kind of curious if it was worth it or not. So, yeah, maybe it, I'll check that one out. It's pretty good. So, here, uh, here's the larger confession at work here, though. Is okay. that I think I'm just a sucker for a found footage movie. Mm -hmm. I don't, I, I feel like I'm grading these on a bit of a curve because of like, well, like case 347 is, is the, uh, a good example of what I'm talking about where some of the performances are good. Some of the performances are not so good. Um, but what I really like about it is that it's not just a bunch of people running around being scared it's mo it's done more documentary style um where it's like okay well we're we're starting off looking at this one thing which is hey we're going to kind of debunk people's uh, uh abduction experiences and look at it as more of a form of psychosis mm -hmm. and very quickly it's like oh shit there's something really going on here and the thing that I really like about it is there's a point where a character shows up and is like, oh, yeah, I was actually a doctor uh, before I got involved in this. And it turns out this shit is real. So I'm going to help lead you through the lore. And that's what I really dug about it is that it's a movie that kind of explores the like, oh, here are all the things that are going on prior to an abduction so it's got kind of a build-up in this movie where a lot of you know found footage movies don't it's just like hey we're gonna go to this asylum oh shit ghost let's run around right. for 45 minutes this is much more hey we're gonna build and build and build and there's gonna be some creepy stuff along the way and then it's all gonna explode in the last 10-15 minutes and and that's what I like in a found footage movie. And I think Butterfly Kisses is almost the more legitimate version of this because that movie is more a movie about a movie uh, and and kind of invents its own um, 
invents its own lore and also there's a number of people in the movie that when the the filmmaker is like hey isn't this spooky don't you think this is a ghost like even these paranormal societies are like no no it's not a ghost this is just (laughs) something somebody made up look you can this all looks like bullshit and i like that kind of stuff uh eduardo sanchez from blair witch project has a cameo in butterfly kisses where he's just like look bro this is just this is cheap this looks Uh, like garbage like uh, if you're uh, trying to pass this off as real found footage you know it's just it's too convenient like you're capturing all these big moments and that's nobody's Not that how lucky. It would actually work. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's why you spend, you know, when ghost hunters would do their 24 hour Halloween marathon or whatever, you'd spend all that time watching for maybe, maybe a little chair would move, <coughs> you know, like a half an inch or something. It was nothing happens. Like that's the thing is that's what, what like, paranormal investigators will tell you is the majority of the time nothing happens but then when you have movies about it it's like boom 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 you know things are happening every second when i wish it was really like that because that would actually be fun (laughs) to do investigating but it's not like that so yeah it comes off fake but yeah so as a result of me like i've really fallen down this dark rabbit hole jamie where like i've seen uh, this butterfly kisses thing. I've seen case 347. Uh, a couple of days ago, I watched one called the Collingswood story. That's where did you find it? I have been trying to find that movie everywhere and I can't find it. Probably to be because that's where everything is. I thought I looked there. Like I, Maybe not. Hold maybe on, I haven't, on. but I'll, I I'll get to the bottom of this, but yeah, keep going. Um, Did you, have you seen evidence? Yeah, um, I think, think so that's the one it starts off like okay it's a guy it it's really not great but it does have some fun moments this is it doesn't make any sense but there's a like four people two couples go into the woods one guy is making a documentary about his friend camping which okay whatever yeah um and then they start hearing noises at night they start seeing or things like strange things around the campsite they're there for a couple of days and it almost seems like a bigfoot kind of movie Mm -hmm. and then the end of it (laughs) like the last half hour is just batshit crazy all right don't tell me anymore because i'll watch i'm not i'm not like you need to watch it it's just it's just nuts all right (laughs) the the collingwood store collingswood story is on amazon prime right now Oh, fuck. Okay, sweet. Yeah, I, But I think it's a recent edition. I think it's one of those things that popped up on the, hey, here's what just came out on, on Amazon Prime. It's it, it's a little bit older, a film. Uh, well, that's why I wanted to see it, because yeah. I hadn't seen it. And I've been specifically trying to look for the earlier ones, yeah. just because there, there's one that I have uh, that I found on Tubi, because Tubi has a found footage section. <laughs> oh, they sure do. <laughs> and uh, there's one that I found that I started watching just to see if I wanted to put it on the list, and I did. And it, so I haven't seen the whole thing yet, but it's called the Blackwood Blackwood Evil. Oh, okay. not, not the just Blackwood Evil, but okay. it's it's from 2000. So, oh. I mean, it is super early in the game. And I am really interested to watch that whole thing because that's what it's when we got to like the mid 2010s, like around 2014. That's when I they start to get well, not start to, but that's when you got a whole bunch of really shitty ones because yeah. everybody kind of realized, hey, I have a video camera, I'll make a movie, and they're crap. Yeah. But the earlier ones are what interest me the most because those are the ones where people were actually trying, you know, uh, after Blair Witch came out and all of that, and they were trying to to dip their toe in. And I think you find some there that were kind of hidden, but interesting. So I'm really excited about this Blackwood one. It might end up being crap, but so far it looks pretty good. All right, I'll watch evidence. I was going to go back and watch Savage Lands because that's one. <gasps> oh, that's one I love I, that I, movie. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed that when I saw it, but it I've only seen it the one time. Um, and I've got Lake Mungo on, mm. on deck as well. But I love I've, that one too. Yeah, I've seen that a number of times. That's just one that, you know, tis the season. Every time around Halloween, I'm probably going to watch Lake Mungo. Um you know it's like ghost watch is another one that's like eh, it's halloween i'm just gonna watch ghost watch 
Yeah, for sure. Well, I'll tell you what, um, then you should, uh, I know you uh, occasionally run across Brian's little write-ups anyway. Um, you should keep an eye out for our Halloween watches because we're doing 30 found footage movies through the month of October. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm probably going to be doing it right along with you. That's uh, awesome. I love it. Next time we do the show, it's going to be nothing but found footage. <laughs> Speaking of the next time we do the show, that's uh, that's about it for this episode. Time do fly. It do. And uh, so I Jamie- knowed it was going to. <laughs> so, <laughs> Jamie, thanks uh, as ever uh, for for telling me what you're watching. And yeah, uh, and we'll and be back in uh, Jamie Egg Story, Eggs and Jam. Who doesn't love Eggs and Jam? Well, now we've Ho-jam. got an episode title. <laughs> Yes. So we'll be back in a month with more eggs and jam, everybody. <laughs> berries and cream, berries and cream. I don't even know what you're doing anymore. That's that old Starburst commercial with the little lad. <laughs> berries and cream, berries and cream. <laughs>